Today we're going to show you how to install a 10 foot double drive residential grade chain link gate. There's two gates, so both of them are going to swing. We're going to walk you through the whole entire process. Let's get started. So first things first, we need to know how big our gates are. We're going to pull our measurement from the end of the gate right there to the other end and we have 56 and a quarter. When installing a double drive chain link gate, you want to make sure and measure both gates. Don't measure just one and think that the other one's gonna be the same because sometimes they can be just a little bit different. So on this one, we have 56 and a quarter too. Since it's a double drive chain link gate, we're gonna have two sets of hinges on one side, two sets of hinges on the other side, and a drop rod in the center. We gotta add for our hardware, our hinges. How we're gonna measure our hinges is we're gonna measure from right where that post would sit, right here, to right here. And our hardware is a two and three eighths post hinge accommodating a inch and three eighths gate frame hinge. They slide together just like that. So we're gonna stack them, put them together just as they would be when you install them, and then we're gonna measure them. We're coming up with about inch and three quarters. We're just gonna go ahead and measure our next set just to make sure that they're the same. They're like inch and seven eighths, inch and three quarters really two inches. So we're gonna plan on two inches. We're gonna have a set of hinges on one side and a set of hinges on the other side. So overall, there's four inches we gotta add into that 112 and a half. So we're gonna go plus four, and that gives us 116 and a half. How are we gonna lock these gates together in the center? We're gonna have to have a drop rod. So now we're gonna have to measure the drop rod to figure out how much room that needs and we're gonna have to add that into the overall 116 and a half now. So here's the drop rod we're gonna use. We're gonna take that same measurement, we're gonna measure from the back side of the hardware where the inch and three eighths gate frame would sit right here. And we're gonna to measure to the throat of the latch. And you want the end of your gate to be somewhere about like right in there. You don't wanna have a big gap but you don't also want it to just barely be catching either. So make sure and measure accordingly. So we are coming up with another two inches. So we're gonna add two inches to our 116 and a half. That gives us 118 and a half. And that's from inside a post to inside a post. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tape measure, we're gonna lay it across the ground. We're gonna go from the inside of the post, and we're gonna lock it in place and then we're gonna look for that 118 and a half, which is right, right there. So we're gonna shoot for 118 and a half, and if we get 119, that's just fine. Now we're gonna use a rhino driver to drive this post on the ground, and I understand that you guys may not have one. Make sure and see this video up here in the corner so that you can see other alternate methods versus using a rhino driver. All right, so now that we're done driving, we got our post on the ground, we're gonna go ahead and take our measurement. We're right at 118 and a half. Hopefully all those measurements that we took, hopefully they're all accurate. Because if not, we're gonna do this again. Okay, so I'm sure you're probably looking at this like, Psst, Dan, that post is way too tall for that four foot fence. You're right, you caught me. I used an eight foot post because that's what I had and I don't wanna cut it off because I wanna be able to reuse this post again for Another awesome video. We drove it all the way that we needed to, but we still have this X amount of post sticking out and we're gonna go with it because we don't wanna throw it away. So the first thing you wanna do is put your hardware on your gate. And we already pre-hung this gate. We just took it down. So we're gonna hang it one more time again. So this one, this one's hung where we think it needs to be, but we're not gonna tighten the hinges down just yet. What we're gonna do is we are gonna show you just exactly what we did over here. Normally you have a chain link fence beyond this post. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna push this fitting on there. And this fitting that I'm holding right here is a two and three eighths post hinge. One thing you wanna make sure and do when you're dealing with any kind of chain link, make sure that the bolts are all facing the same direction. Don't have a bolt head here and then a bolt head here nuts here, nuts there, keep it uniform. Nuts are supposed to be opposite of the chain link side. 
So nuts are supposed to go to the secure side. Now to tighten this down, it's a 3 8 bolt, 9 16 nut. So you can either use a impact driver like I have here with a 3 8 socket adapter, or you can use a wrench, or you can use a socket. I'm gonna loosely tighten that just so it sticks. Now I'm gonna take my two inch and three eighths gate frame hinges. We're gonna put them on our gate. Again, like I said, stay uniform with your nuts and bolts. And this is what I'm talking about. The chain link is on this side. The nuts are opposite of the chain link. So we're gonna slide the bottom hinge on top of that post hinge. What I'm gonna do is I want those gates to be about level. Since I don't have any chain link fence here, I'm just gonna cheat and slide this over. And I'm too low. So my two top rails right here, they're not straight across. We're gonna raise this gate up to match this, to match this gate. Now that we're pretty happy with that, we can go ahead and tighten our hardware down. So before we continue with the drop rod, Fun little fact. In some scenarios, maybe you have seen something like this where the hinge on the side of the gate, maybe what they have going on is they rolled or the cockeyed the hinge like that and then put it to the side. The reason they may have done that is because they set their post too close together. They had to adjust it somehow and that's the only thing that they could do to make that gate work. That's why it's really important to measure those fittings before you start fiddle farting with your gates. Willy nilly never pays. So we got both our gates hung now. And don't forget, don't forget, the top of this post, it's gone. You don't see it anymore. But really, we need to focus over here. So the problem here, these gates, they won't stay shut. That's the problem. Because they won't lock into each other. There's a fitting for that. It's called a drop rod. This is a residential grade drop rod. Now there's heavier drop rods for different classes of chain link fence. So there's, there's these pins here. I can't roll past it. I can't roll past that bottom one, so when I pull it out of the ground, I have something to rest it on. So you gotta make sure to put that top bracket on before you fully put the U-bolt in there. And this one, we're just gonna go ahead and put on and slide up, cause its height really doesn't matter. So go from the bottom up. And see how that, that has a nice channel there and this, this drop rod can't come out of that bracket. So that's what we want. So when the drop rod is in the resting position, we want the bottom of the drop rod to be up above the ground so that this thing can be swing freely. We want the drop rod to be even with the bottom of the gate. So there was a half inch nut here and a half inch nut here and we tightened those down. So what I have here is just a piece of EMT conduit. Three quarter inch. Conduit is measured by the ID, inside diameter. Maybe some of you guys don't have dirt and maybe you have concrete underneath your gate. So what you wanna do if you have concrete is take a hammer drill and drill a hole into the concrete for this to receive into. The drop rod's gonna go into that hole to lock it into the ground. We don't have any concrete here. So what we are gonna do, what we are gonna do, we're gonna take this piece of pipe. We're gonna drive it in the ground. But before we drive it, what we have to do first, we don't want the dirt to come up in there and keep moving up the pipe as we drive it in the ground. We wanna keep it hollow. So we're gonna smash one end. As 
So I've got one end smashed so that the dirt's not gonna come up inside that. Also, another benefit to doing that is it's not gonna twist in the ground. So now before we drive this in the ground, we need to figure out exactly where that pipe needs to go. What you need to do is look down your gate to make sure it's straight. From where I'm standing, I'm looking at the gate perpendicular to the opening, so it looks straight to me. But to you, the gate is crooked. As I go this way, the gate is straight. And I'm gonna mark where that drop rod is, and I'm gonna drive this in the ground. As I drive, I can pull the drop rod to it and see that I'm still straight with my drop rod. So there, we're starting to turn just a little bit and I'm not gonna be able to get it back. So what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna go ahead and cut it off. You need enough in the ground to make a solid foundation to receive the drop rod. So if something's pushing on your gates, it's gonna withstand that pressure. I'm looking for like 16, 18, two feet. The looser the ground, the deeper you need to go. Or maybe consider setting this in concrete, not driving it in the ground. Perfect. Let's see if all that measuring paid off. So I have a little bit bigger of a gap than what I planned on, but it's still good because I am within my fork distance right here. So it still receives my gate. I am just a hair bigger than what I wanted, but I'm still in the throat of the fork. So it's, it's good. I know some of you may be like, hey, is, can you put a lock on that thing? So yes, you could install a carabiner or a padlock on here. If, right there, you didn't even have to pay extra. If you wanna see how to install just a single walk gate and a residential chain link fence, make sure and see that video right here. And if you wanna see how to install residential chain link, make sure to watch this video right here. It's Dan with SWI, we are Wyoming's fence company and you have a good dang day.